I almost forgot the most important part. Hi, and welcome to another exciting pirate news. Um, I have a fine set of gentlemen and a fine set of topics for you all this evening. Um, thank you uh, for those who are waiting to watch, and we will hopefully get to hear some input from you uh, from our audience tonight. Um, so, gents, would you like to say hello? Hi. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> Nya. Good evening, everybody. And, and howdy ho. Uh, so I am your quartermaster of the Massachusetts Pirate Party, uh, Joseph, and with me is Jamie, our glorious captain, and we also have Steve, the, the vice captain, and we also have the one and only so, I got re I'm a rejected Animal Crossing character. <laughs> well, I mean, the the big thing is uh, the big thing is he is our representative to the U.S. Pirate Party, um, and but also the voice of reason. But uh, Steve, you, you wanted to say something right away? Me? There's um, no. Keep going. <laughs> well, I mean, the biggest one is apparently we have some secret police going up in Springfield. Uh, Jamie, could you give us some more details on that? Sure. So um, there's a case in Western Mass of Daphne Moore, who is a former assistant clerk magistrate with the Spring with Springfield, Massachusetts court system, uh, as well as her daughter and son-in-law have been charged by the police um, with trafficking drugs from Springfield to Vermont. Uh, much of the evidence came from a ostensibly secret video camera they stuck on it the police stuck on a utility pole outside of the Moore's home uh, and it recorded everything uh, that occurred happened outside the home and produced a searchable digitized record and so uh, the Moore family lawyer is going after them saying they didn't have a warrant to uh <clears throat> to go and use this footage and so it came before the first circuit court of appeals and uh apparently the judges were like this doesn't qu they haven't ruled but a lot of their questioning was this doesn't feel right um <clears throat> so it's it's going to be a very interesting development to see what happens whether they whether the wars the moors win on appeal uh win on appeal or um uh or uh whether the police are able to just stick surveillance cameras outside of people's houses for many months uh you know with like zoom and tilt and pan and all those other funky stuff no doubt you know tied to uh facial recognition if they can get away with it so I think it would be really cool if um, members of the public were able to stick secret surveillance cameras inside of, say, evidence rooms, you know, <laughs> logging in evidence. We have 15 pounds. No, make that 10 pounds of marijuana. <laughs> or, if being, or here's a crazy idea. It being a public feed where you could just log into your local police department to see who's walking in, who's walking out. Yeah. That way the evidence doesn't go missing. Yes. You so, find out how quickly the evidence will stay right on that shelf. Evidence uh, doesn't go missing. Evidence doesn't get tampered with. And, you know, there's um, and actually you could you could use this to you could probably use this if there's any questions about a chain of custody. Right. Mm. So I think the real question we want is, um, do we feel comfortable with a government that puts cameras pointed directly at the front door of um critics and reformers and like i think pretty much on like no matter what side of the aisle you're on <clears throat> that's not a power you should be comfortable with the government having um i mean we shouldn't be comfortable with the fact that ring does it too but whatever we'll get to that when we get to that so like yeah, this is massive, disgusting overreach. Well, and I... it, it would have been massive, disgusting overreach if that camera had a warrant. If it was part of like a wider CCTV network, it still would have been overreach. Like we are, we are getting to a point where it's it's like surveillance is going to be intensely personal and like um, 
like utterly all encompassing or it's going to be abolished because the the factors that were a limit on surveillance earlier the cost of technology the size of technology and the the cost of of backing up and sorting through footage um are abolished well like, here's, that's not here's an my issue. question to you uh good sir is that what's if you make the technology so cheap and so easy then what stops the the rapists the the criminals the underbelly of using the exact same technology exact same tech to look in girls bathrooms boys bathrooms or any place that we don't want there to be a camera well you know, I, I, mean, I i think the the you're taking the wrong point of view by speculating um because one of the things i i want to point out is that you know okay so the police hung a camera on a phone pole outside of somebody's house had it pointed at their door in certain contexts like for example people who live in public housing this is how they live period um you know our i live across the street from a, a local housing authority they have cameras everywhere there was a you know a fellow living down the street from what i gather he had a disagreement with um like sort of the um you know the the estate's property manager so in no time at all there's a camera pointed at his front door and another camera pointed at his back door i live off across the street from as i said the housing authority property they installed several cameras on the on poles in front of my house um you know fortunately there was a little technicality that allowed um allowed a few of some folks on my street to get them removed uh the housing authority never bothered to get the permits to run wires across a public way and when asked to produce such such permits the cameras quickly came down mm. so i mean real one of the things that we've got to realize is you know this you know it, granted this the omnipresent surveillance sort of thing is a dystopian vision but it's for for some people it is not a vision of the future it is a vision of today hmm. and it's an uneven distributed un, as you point out it's an unevenly distributed one right so the person who owns the multi-million dollar house they're going to have the cameras pointed out they're not going right. to have cameras pointed at their door or at their driveway or things like that right mm -hmm. totally and on top of that there are companies that are just profiteering off of this you know and that's something that's and statistically it's actually one of the worst places to work for is one of those companies um there's law literature and and data to prove behind that so i mean just the mindset to be running these companies generally isn't a normal mindset that you expect <laughs> your boss is really evil <laughs> our corporate motto they were. They were. is be evil <laughs> yeah but, well, i mean but I, I bring this up every time we talk about surveillance but um because it is it is it's like it's that big an issue but love int love intelligence mm -hmm. uh survey like people who work for for surveillance companies absolutely abuse their authority like just a few months ago someone was busted adding himself to um i think it was adt has like an in-house camera system and he was just watching people like he would uh, during setup have them add his personal email account as like a dummy test to the account and then he just used that to log in and spy on them and like this is not an isolated case this is happening at every company at every level <clears throat> and it's absolutely happening in the police de departments too so what you're saying, Walt, is that stalking, it's not just for work anymore. <laughs> like, oh my God. The it is it's a stalker's dream. Mm -hmm. Like if you are um like if you have a predilection towards abusiveness or or like being controlling or stalking, like that's where you go. You seek the social institutions that bless the power you want over others, political, mm -hmm. security, religious. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. But getting back to Joe's point, if I can, I mean, of course. <clears throat> I mean, the technology feeds on itself so that we have technology to break into people's phones or to to put spyware on phones. And if if the police are going to use it, then pretty soon that gets turned into a into a, a product that 
uh, you know, your lover, your spouse, uh, someone who's just harassing you, um, anyone who can get access to your phone can put that spyware, can purchase it, put it on your phone, send you a link and have it, you know, accidentally, you know, you could, you could go and, and accidentally, uh, you know, download it potentially. Um, and so the, the technology then feeds on itself and it becomes cheaper for everyone to potentially spy on everyone else. And that's as pirates, that's not the society we want. Privacy is a fundamental human right. It is. I mean, it if is. we're talking about people hiding cameras in like bathrooms, that that already happens. Like there's yeah. a huge community of of like wretched perverts who who you know go online and like post footage of their family members. Taking Dude. a dump. <laughs> yeah. Or even like the mom and pop who post everything to Facebook and social media, whether their kids consent to or not. Uh, right. it's, it's a major social issue that is probably something that we're going to be fighting for a long time, unfortunately. But it's something that fundamental human rights of being to yourself, you know. I'm uh, just going to say, like, that is, like, posting your kid online is a really hot topic um if you have kids that do viral shit all the time i really feel for you like i am i'm sitting on like six figures of gold footage that i'm not <laughs> releasing to twitter and like oh man this like my kid like i was i was with you i was anti exploiting kids on youtube until i had a kid that um could make me rich and now i think it's okay right, so what about cats Let's get to brass tacks here. <laughs> we're always acceptable. We are we accept this as the internet. Thank you, cats, and uh, other sources of entertainment. Uh, but I gave these cats years. They got me nothing. Years of my life, nothing. But more importantly, uh, there, there's something else that interesting that just happens that I think Jamie was telling us all about uh, the OCPF uh, being uh, sued, perhaps. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so uh, apparently in a lawsuit filed Tuesday by State Senator Ryan Fatman of Webster, his wife, Stephanie Fatman, uh, who's the Worcester County Register of Probate, and a number of related individuals and campaign committees against Michael Sullivan. Um, sorry, let me... Uh, basically, they're, they're suing... Uh, Michael Sullivan, who's head of the Massachusetts Office of Campaign and Political Finance, which I still think is probably the one of the best, most helpful agencies that's out there in Massachusetts government. But anyways, um, <clears throat> and so, okay, there, there's a dispute. Uh, they're suing them. That's fine. Things happen, you know, like that's not a big deal. But apparently the um senator state senator uh fatman and his uh wife and and others have dis have gone before a judge and said we want to put this under seal we don't want the reporters at the at at the uh trial or the hearing or anything and all the documents are under seal and so now we have a state senator who obviously has a large degree of power suing someone in our state government who also has a large degree of power, and we don't know what's going on. I'm going to point out, Fatman yeah. is a Republican, and therefore I think this is bad. What? What? And do we have any idea what the nature of the suit is over? Was you know was this dude pissed because he had to like disclose donations or something i mean i would assume it's related to the functions of the office of campaign and political finance doesn't want to play by the rules we all play by um we do have a question from samuel um and he wanted to know some guides for encrypting windows um he's getting a new windows and he wants a couple tricks i know personally i use peer block Peer block is a good way to see what's coming in and out of your network, um, and it's a good start. But gentlemen, I I, I know I use Tor, I knew, and I know I use uh, all sorts of data scrubs 
going on. But that being said, um, <clears throat> I would say that that's more of a question towards you, Jamie, being the master of the encryption. I mean, there's there's a there's a couple of things. Um, one, if I haven't used Windows in a long time, so I'm a little rusty on that. But um, a lot of operating systems come with disk encryption, so I would suggest turning that on, making sure you back up your disks, obviously, and that you keep track of what your password is, so that if for some reason your computer goes south, you're going to be able to recover from the disk or recover from a backup. Um, but in general, turn off, you know, turn on disk encryption because the advantage of that is when the computer is turned off, then when they turn it on, they can't, odds are they can't break into it unless there's some vulnerability. Um, but the disk itself is encrypted until you log in and, and allow it to access it. Um, in terms of, you know, as you said, you know, there's Tor, the torproject.org to be able to um, go online, uh, you know, generally anonymously, uh, you know, dependent upon what things you're doing and how much of your outside of Tor usage uh, accounts you're using. Um, so those would be some places to start. Uh, you know, we, uh, <clears throat> you know, folks can email us at info at masspirates.org. Um, check out cryptoparty.in slash Boston for the Boston Crypto Party, which hasn't met in a while, but you know, there's details there for, for things you can look at. Um, but always, you know, contact us with questions and we're always happy to answer them. Yeah, so two yeah. quick things I'd like to add. Uh, for like you, like Jamie, I'm not a Windows user on a really routine basis, but I believe BitLocker is the name of the disk encryption, um, disk encryption utility software that comes with the operating system. Uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation maintains a website called ssd.eff.org. SSD stands for Surveillance Self-Defense, um, and they actually have a really nice set of resources, um, you know, for different applications. And it's, you know, ssd.eff.org, totally worth checking out. Also, there was a major vulnerability that just happened where the Chinese portal um, got recently started getting patched by Microsoft. And so there's a lot of reverse hacks that people are taking advantage of right now with Windows. So I would be extra careful what information you send out online uh, through a Windows portal. And I would be very keen to keep your information on lockdown. Um, that being and said, also, sorry. Uh, that being it's, said, just be yeah. extra, make sure you're encrypting everything. Jamie? If you can if you can set your two-factor authentication to an authenticator app rather than email or text or call, um, a lot of email and, and um, phone uh, verification codes have been getting hijacked. Even in Google and like all the major, all the major brands. Um, so yes, I'm all saying it's hundred percent. Remember, some folks just need a high five in the face with a chair, <laughs> and they just keep on coming. <laughs> I mean, would you like to extend your car's warranty? No, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't need um, and I don't need a new Medicare card. We've been and trying I don't to want a damn ebook. <laughs> we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Do any of you guys get the calls from USA Online Pharmacy number one? No. no. <laughs> they <laughs> got, <laughs> trying to reach you, sir. They have three products on offer: Viagra, Cialis, mixed bag 50-50. <laughs> Speaking is that of drugs, a mixture of Cialis and Viagra? <laughs> I oh man, I am terrified to find out. Fifty pills, fifty dollars. Speaking, speaking of drugs, uh, the the vaccine. Actually, is, can uh, I just say one last thing before oh, we yeah. move on? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just just remember, whatever computer you or phone or whatever, always keep your operating system up to date. That's one of the best things you can do beyond, you know, making sure that you've got a password that is 
as long as possible. Um, and we've got things you can do on that. Um, but, you know, just keeping your operating system updated constantly, you know, they, they find uh, vulnerabilities and they patch them and you always want to make sure you're not running behind because it's just more than likely someone can get in, unfortunately. And I am going to say, like, no matter how good your computer's safety is, uh, this is going to be the thing that leaks the most data most of the time. Um, if you can, um, I don't know how to do this, but people often talk about um, capturing and killing the feedback data that Windows and a lot of the other inbuilt Windows apps now, now manage for whatever reason. Um, I don't because I'm lazy and nothing I do uh, can possibly hurt me. Mm. I hope. But that being <laughs> said, vaccines. Uh, so what's going on with the vaccine right now? So a uh, CNBC reported that the White House is considering whether to lift uh, intellectual privilege protections, uh, as I call it, instead of intellectual property, uh, on COVID-19 vaccines, uh, which would allow other, company, other countries to replicate the existing vaccines, um, such as the Johnson & Johnson or uh, Moderna um, or other ones that are currently in, in usage in the United States. Um, something to point out back in, in, in the two thousands, various countries just said, screw intellectual privilege laws. We're going to allow companies locally to manufacture, uh, anti AIDS drugs, um, because they could go and manufacture them cheaply rather than buy them from the United States, which would be horrendously expensive and would result in the deaths of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or more. Um, so that's another avenue if the U.S. doesn't go and lift these, uh, lift these protections. It's, it's just, it's mass murder to not do this. Like, the longer we wait, the more time COVID has to develop an immunity to the vaccine. And, and then mutate. this shit, yeah, it just starts all over again. Like we have to do this now. Yeah, I mean the I, polio I, I, vaccine had had no had no patent protection on it whatsoever. Yeah, I mean I'm totally fine with pharmaceutical companies making money off of you know uh, we'll we'll say discretionary drugs like Viagra. <laughs> you want you can make all the money off erectile of dysfunction drugs that you want. Um, a a uh well they shouldn't be able to gouge people you know well you know um the, it's but, a medical condition you know for those who need it i'm just i'm if you if you look into any of any of the press releases that that these vaccine companies have sent to their investors they're talking about having to retweak this formula every year like they are looking at this as like immunity as a subscription service like oh, they are yeah. going to sell you the privilege to live in society for a year. Um, like people talk about um, hospital or um, medical companies not wanting to cure cancer because the treatment is more effective than the cure. That's bullshit. But it's actually happening for COVID. Like we are seeing this happen before our very eyes. It's oh. what you what Good. you were just saying there about you know companies trying to figure out how they're going to tweet stuff and you know, to, to prolong the life of their patents or whatnot or um you know to just keep milking this thing for what it's worth you know an evergreen patent um you know that's that's you, you just made me think of monsanto so <laughs> thanks for nothing malt for making me think of monsanto <laughs> well here's my question if they're doing this for a live crisis why would they not be doing it for the cancer and for trying to like just treat cancer as opposed to trying to eliminate it that, well, that's one, my cancer is, is isn't just one disease it's a number of diseases with a number of different causes so mm. like um yeah it's if we if we had a disease where like you could get the disease from something you eat, something you breathe, standing in the sun too long, or your body just goes, 
uh, that would be pretty difficult to cure too. Mm. I, I like the last version of it. So uh, speaking about evergreen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking about evergreen, uh, we're pirates. We're, Can we talk about it boats now? <laughs> yes, yes. I think it's long overdue. This week we had something really, really funny happen, where uh, for low values of funny, <laughs> with oh, this amazing is high comedy. I mean, they're always saying like pirates at sea, but this guy drew a ball and penis of oh, two well, balls. plural two balls, two multiple balls. balls. They're like classic cartoon locker room style balls the and being spray paint on the sidewalk and then and he wasn't block, even a fighter pilot and then proceeded to block the Suez canal which is responsible for 10 percent of the world's like world's trade i've um, i've honestly heard higher numbers like i've heard 12 to 17 percent uh, I would go out and buy all your toilet paper that you can get your hands on, because they're the, saying it's got block toilet paper. So before we get into some of the the more hilarious aspects of this, um, I want to point out that there is a a classification of cargo container ship called um, that basically just ranked by how much larger are you than the legally allowed limit in the Suez Canal. <laughs> like this boat was larger, heavier than you should allow in the Suez Canal. Um, and then it suffered an electrical failure. And just the force of the wind pushing it is what caused this, this catastrophe. Um, and <laughs> it was and BFB. this is the same company that also dumped, I think it was a quarter million rubber ducks into the ocean. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. And it's yeah. because of the, all those ducks that we got the data that the world's currents are all interlinked because the ducks were everywhere. <laughs> we found them on every beach. Yeah, like you would never be able to get the world to sign off on a on a on a science experiment like that. Um, so you know, um, I guess thank you for that. <laughs> I, guess. I, I think it's 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 fascinating to see what capitalism has done to the Suez Canal because like this is crucial like a crucial piece of infrastructure that um hasn't really been expanded or improved to keep pace with like what it's being used for improved. such that when there's and, the one bolt the one what was it the excavator the one excavator trying to dig this thing out I think so. Brought you in on the trial, and it's going to take you out. <laughs> sorry for interrupting, Malt. The sorry. the the technical term people are getting very upset about. People not referring to that as as a particular piece of equipment. It is, um, it is an automatic assault rifle, machine gun clip, dump truck bulldozer, is the is the technical term for it. Um, but, but yeah, there's there's um. And it's 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 illegal in Washington D.C., but um, yeah, there's there's it's it's stuck on both ends. It is stuck on both ends, and there's going to come a moment where someone is the first boat through the Suez Canal, and they're going to have just a few kilometers before it ends, and they're going to have like all these other boats behind them, and it's going to just take so much willpower not to just cram the boat back into the side <laughs> trapping everyone behind you and then and then what you've created is basically the sickest uh set for the next um road warrior movie I, I was gonna say if you thought Ruth water world eastbound <laughs> traffic was bad <laughs> wait till you see this like i just i want to write the science fiction story which is like the autonomous state that develops in the cargo container society of the suez <laughs> canal so i mean it's a major thing and not enough resources have been dedicated to for clearing this out and wait, what? wasn't the next day, didn't the same company also wedge a truck under a bridge? Yes, and it totally shut down traffic on a major highway, too. 
Um, so I think but I don't have the details on that one. I, I, I think, could forgive that. I could totally forgive that because you know I, I live I live in Boston. We got Starro Drive every year. Somebody sticks a freaking truck underneath Starro Drive. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean it says on big signs on there, "Don't go over if you're over this feet." And people are always like, "I have no idea what I'm doing." We need <laughs> the cargo the chains. <laughs> we we put like a, a a rough like like a, a straw replica of a truck under starro drive and then burn it to appease the truck gods <laughs> uh, i do like to say some of the comments right now real quick petition to rename the ship to the the Bodie mcboat stuck <laughs> <laughs> So one thing I'm I'm taking away from all of this is like so with how white nationalists in the 80s and 90s took over the police and like the the military uh, industrial complex, I think leftists and anti capitalists really 80s or 90s I, you could go further back on that like they're further oh, forward sure. too. Okay, so whatever, um, nerds. <laughs> But like <laughs> anti-capitalists need to do the same for like shipping and logistics. Like <laughs> if you hate Amazon, go into the company and just like cram all of the friggin' trucks under Storo Drive. Like that's oh. really what you gotta do. You know, there's so there is uh the FBI or actually I think it was called the OSI. Well, one of our national intelligence agencies during World War II wrote the Manual for Simple Sabotage. And this was a whole idea. It's like, if you have worn out machine parts and good machine parts, you throw the worn out ones in with the good ones so that someone will have to waste time. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're putting on a, you know, a metal plate with 19 bolts, you're going to put it on, and after 18 bolts, you will realize that you've forgotten gotten the gasket and pull the thing apart and it the whole idea is to just basically use idiocy as a way of slowing slowing your opponent down um it works your malt is total malt is really serious about this <laughs> mm. like i am i am going to do something i don't know what it is but it's going to cause a bunch of people to sort through all of these videos and then, like, all of the talking news media heads covering this are going to be like, yeah, we all saw this coming. Like, like, I don't know how they bred that many ducks in such a small backyard, <laughs> but there were world warning signs. And that being said, there was one comment that we missed. Uh, 21 years later, the PlayStations are stuck in the Suez again. So... Um, and that was by Samuel. Uh, that's all I have for this evening, folks. Thank you very much for coming down. We really appreciate it. Bad Dragon. Oh, we forgot to talk about this. One of the oh, companies Bad Dragon, yes. stuck um, on the evergreen is uh, Bad Dragon, a high-end dildo manufacturer. Um, all right, now I gotta go put NSFW in front of this thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll say sex toy. Sex toy. <laughs> They've got a new product that they cannot release because it is on the evergreen. Like all of it. So, like, you gotta imagine that's gonna become a collector's item. So wait, they're shipping them just to Europe and the United States? Wouldn't they yes. be shipping it elsewhere to to like it, Part of be, Asia or Africa or something? Probably going all over, but best advertisement ever seen that he drew a big dick and balls and <laughs> bad dragons are on it. They're in on this. You bad dragon. I mean? Maybe. Investigate maybe. bad dragon. Maybe. Oh, yeah. And just as a bonus, I uh, I just quickly located the old uh, you know manual for simple sabotage. I post put the link in the chat, but you know maybe we could stick that in the uh, description so folks can... Uh, can learn how to set off sprinklers in warehouses. <laughs> and uh, we appreciate uh, everything. If you can give us a like and share this video, we had a lot of fun making it tonight. And uh, we really appreciate you out there. Uh, thank you. Like, share, subscribe, you know, feed the algorithm and the whole nine. But uh, we keep on growing and uh, we'll keep on fighting for the truth. So only you can prevent forest fires. And check oh, us yeah. out at masspirates.org and uh, sign up for our newsletter and all the other fun stuff. 
And we also have crypto parties where we just try and help you protect your information. So um, thank you so much, and we look forward to next week. Bye, folks. <laughs>